Contained in these pages are my observations of the bizarre creatures that have appeared on Carnate Island since the cataclysm struck. The creatures emerge in a variety of ways, but many of them appear to come from within the island itself, as if the very earth of Carnate were poisonous and vile. Though I scarcely have time to keep a journal like this while trying to keep myself alive, my inquisitive nature forces me to write down what I see in the hope that I might better understand it. But how can this unspeakable horror possibly be understood? It is as if Carnet's horrific sins, both past and present, are being brought to life in a pageant of death. Slayer, I first witnessed these creatures jumping out of the ground itself. Their heads were detached from their torsos, held aloft by hideous contraptions. Their limbs have been replaced by blades of the sharpest steel. To my eyes, they appear to be a manifestation of decapitation. Yet it seems improbable anyone ever had their head chopped off an abbot. I suppose on Carnate anything is possible. I have dubbed these monstrosities slayers. Inmate! Back in your cell! Everything's under control! Marksman. Based on the battery of rifles attached to its back and the blindfold around its head, this marksman appears to be the reincarnation of a military firing squad. Abbott was originally a POW camp during World War II, so it seems likely they would have had executions of that sort. Indeed, there are stories of a rogue colonel who was to be court-martialed but instead took his own life. Perhaps he is connected to these abominations. Where the fuck are you? What's taking so long? Do it. Fucking do it! Just fucking kill me! Save us before Hargrave gets back. You gotta cut us down. You I gotta... don't think so. My prisoners never make it out alive. The time has come to wash the scum from the earth. This is my Armageddon. Lock it down. Inmates in the gallery. Repeat. Inmates in the gallery. Inmates in the gallery. That's the case. Oh, it's the fucking V block. Gotta be a way to get in there without getting fucked. Fuck that Fuck yeah! Hargraves fucking fuck. 
Jesus Christ! Hargrave popped all these inmates! That's one CO I'm glad to see dead, man. They ain't all bad, but Hargrave, he was one twisted individual. Huh, may he fucking rock! Mainliner. In the 1970s, lethal injection was introduced as the most humane means of state-sanctioned killing. To date, 25 such procedures have taken place in Abbott. This creature, I call him the Mainliner, appears to suffer with every move he makes. Perhaps the mixture of sodium pentothal, pancoronium bromide, and potassium chloride in his veins is not to his liking. The numerous needles jabbed into his body cannot help his disposition. Man, what is this shit on the floor? Looks like blood, but it's, it's like it's breathing or something. <laughs> Motherfucker! I grew up in Lafayette Corp, and I tell you, I ain't never been so fucking scared. What kind of sick mutant was that thing? Fucking government, fucking experiments, fucking bullshit! Watch out! There's this more! Nooseman. Not only is this Nooseman dead from being hung by the neck, but he also appears to have had his skin removed. I wonder if these creatures are tied to the legendary story of the inmates who, outraged by the death of fellow workers in a quarry mining accident, hung and skinned five COs. The noosemen are more supernatural than many of their brethren, ripping themselves straight out of the ceiling in some entirely impossible manner. Burrower. These burrowers are some of the most lethal creatures I have encountered, primarily due to their ability to spring forth from the ground itself and just as quickly resubmerge. They're closely tied to the very soil of Carnate, a theme among these monstrosities. Its appearance is of a human body tied up in a gunny sack and constrained by leather straps, with deadly steel chains attached to various locations. I believe they represent those buried alive. Be quiet! Don't get any closer! They can hear your footsteps! Fester. Continually emerging from the slave ship, these are the festering creatures who foil my attempts to escape this confounded rock. Rats live within their flesh, writhing within it and then springing forth randomly. They appear to be a reincarnation, not of the slaves, for then they would be of darker skin tone, but instead of the slave traders. In this form, they are forced to live out again and again the fate they forced upon those hapless slaves. Out of the waves? I 
swear it is the most hideous thing I have ever laid eyes upon. Kill one, but another takes its place as quickly as you can Back to Winston Kane! Inferno. From what I have witnessed, this manifestation of evil appears to have two distinct forms. The first, a young girl in Puritan dress, perhaps 13 years of age. This transforms into an altogether more disturbing flaming creature. Both clutch a small handmade doll. To my mind, there is no doubt that these creatures are tied to the three young girls who made witchcraft accusations in the late 1600s and led to the incendiary death of 11 innocents. Has the devil trapped you? You're not a bad man. You have to believe. the one, aren't you? You must be here You're to take me away, aren't you? I will kill every last one of you! Die, Diablo! Die! Dr. Killjoy. One of Abbott's most persistent legends tells of Dr. Killjoy, the quite insane psychiatrist surgeon who ran an asylum on Carnate. Doing research of my own, I found that he did indeed exist, though which stories are true and which are fabrication is anyone's guess. Since the cataclysm, I have three times seen a surgeon formed of pure light, reminiscent of 16 millimeter film projection come to life. Could this be the fine doctor? At last, you have made it to the climax of this fine performance. Let me introduce our newest player. This fascinating specimen is a creature of purest strength and rage, whose presence here must prove quite a conundrum to you. His resemblance to these other soulless beasts cannot be denied, but he is altogether harder to truly understand. But with the capabilities of my experimental device, I can bring about a rebirth of the spirit, an awakening of the soul. We can shed light on this most unique situation. Why not come inside and I shall show you? Not to fear, talk. I shall do it. to keep the rest of the world out. You see, but we can't have intrusions. This session is about wait! Oh! What are you doing? Are you mad? Why, yes you are. We all know that. Don't you see your kidding me? Who do you think you are, you Neanderthal? You cannot defeat me. I am one of the greats. One of the brightest stars in the sky. I cannot avoid the subject anymore. The time has come for a confrontation, a meeting of the minds, or perhaps I should say a meeting of the mind and the mindless. Go ahead, see if you can't reach out to your deepest fear. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
considerable. But remember, Talk, no matter what you do to accept yourself, there's no telling if someday the bell jar will not descend again. Horus. Many inmates break once inside Abbott, but none have snapped more extremely than Horus Gage, who, the tale goes, became convinced his wife wasn't safe without his protection and sliced her to ribbons during a conjugal visit. He ended up in the mercy chair, electrocuted by Abbott's then executioner Hermes Haight. For years, inmates have said he haunts Abbott, and I believe I saw him ten minutes ago. I surely wish I had not. Oh no, it's back. It's starting again. It never stops. It just keeps burning. It won't let me go. <laughs> I think we got something in common. We know what love is. We know what it is to love a woman. You do anything for her. Am I right? And something else we got. We know what it is to lose it. Lose it all. To not be in control. It's coming again! <laughs> What I was in here for, beating up some guy, whatever. I got screwed by the system. Fuck him. It fucked my life. They're as responsible for my old lady's dying as I am. Nobody wants the whole story. Just lock him up, throw away the key. See you next life. Why won't it stop? I just wanted to keep her safe. I couldn't protect her while I was on the inside. It ate me up. I lay awake at night thinking of what would happen to me. Any guy like me, any guy really loved his old lady would have done the same thing. Ah, it burns! So I couldn't take it anymore. So on that day, she came over for a conjugal and fucked. I screwed her like I never had before. It was smooth, warm, rough, and sweet. The best lay of our lives. Scalding! Laying there after. She looked so beautiful with a sheen of sweat on her. But I did. I cut her. Every last inch of her. All over. I cut her. I just wanna die! Heart! Heart! Thank you. Hermes. Since the cataclysm, I have several times found myself mysteriously surrounded by noxious green fumes. I have fled in each case, and I think if I had not, I might not be alive to write this now. Within the gas, I have seen a humanoid who seemed to take great joy in the prospect of my death. Could this be Hermes? Abbott's resident executioner for several decades. If I recall, he took his own life in the gas chamber. Sweet! This is it! We're set now. It's like a vault in here. Nothing can get in. Nothing? You say something? Yes. What was that? I think the dope's coming back. Breathe deep. <coughs> that smell! <coughs> what in the fuck's going on? That always feels good. He needed to go. He wasn't interesting enough. Not like you. You understand how it feels. He needed someone professional to pull the switch. A lot of eager sadists applied, 
But I was the only one who took the work seriously. So seriously I wanted to taste the gas myself. That's what Conant does, it brings out the killer inside. It's the perfect place for you and me. There is a difference between those that feel safest in the light and those that feel safest in the dark. Which are you, Torque? In the chamber, there is an intense light. Everything is visible. In the control room, the lights are off. You can't see anyone. No one knows you. I only briefly saw this enormous creature a single time, near the docks. I cannot even begin to describe him, save for one thing. He seems to be quite literally connected to an inmate, the convicted killer Tork. Incredible as it may sound, this creature appears to have a miniature version of Tork attached to him via a long umbilicus. Beyond that, I can only say that I view him as the most evil of all the creatures, a pure manifestation of fury and hatred. Tork's Family In one of my other entries, I discuss Tork, the notorious inmate who seems at ease dispatching these creatures. I recall seeing in the sun a picture of the man's ex-wife and two boys and I have drawn it here from memory. I remember they were a beautiful family, and it seems unbelievable that any man so blessed would have the audacity to kill them so savagely. But as we all know, beauty alone is often not enough. Tork. Since the Cataclysm. Tork. Since the Cataclysm, I have seen the death of many inmates. But one seems to be an unstoppable survivor. I've seen him take out packs of marksmen and slayers without even breathing hard. Torque is an inmate of some ill repute, having been sentenced to die for the killing of his ex-wife and children. Of course, being convicted and being guilty are two different things. Perhaps he will save us all but I feel certain he will at least save himself. The creature. I saw this creature in a dream, and he seemed somehow connected to these horrific events. In my dream, I witnessed the inmate Torque transform into this beast and lay waste to all around him. Since the Cataclysm, I have seen Torque go berserk, killing beasts with his bare hands. But of course, during such times, he himself does not actually transform into a beast. He merely becomes intensely enraged. The meaning of my dream, I leave for the reader to discern. Torque! My diagnosis is complete. Your cure is at hand. You might think my methods a bit unorthodox, but my results will speak for themselves. Ahead you will encounter something altogether unlike what you've seen before. But I have something that can help you. A device that can cure you, put your demons to rest. But only if it is sufficiently powered, and only if you are in your more, shall we say, primal form. Use this correctly, and you cannot help but be cured. You do want to be cured, don't you, Tork? It's up to you now. Wearing black. 
black clothes. He was like a shadow. I didn't see him, and then he was there. Oh, Daddy, I wish you could have been there. I know you would have kept us safe. Always had the worst luck, T. We didn't work out for so long. And when we got close, it all got taken away. You'd never hurt us. Not on purpose. No matter how angry you got at the world, you always loved me and the boys. Now's the time, T. You need to face down the anger you have inside. Remember, I'm right there with you.
sends his regards. Back in Eastern, he warned you, but you didn't listen. He said to leave you alive. Only you. Enjoy your new life. Get on board, quick! I don't know what the hell's happened, but we gotta get out of here. Another boat's coming to pick up anybody else who's left. Hold on! You're that guy Torque, ain't ya? I heard about you in the news. I got a friend at the DA's office. Says the prosecutor on your case is being indicted. Says you probably get a new trial. Guess it's your lucky day, huh? Jesus. You look like you've really been through hell. Somebody's missing from this picture, T. I don't want us to ever be apart again. Love always, Carmen. <laughs>